All right, guys, so our final topic here today is the WandaVision Season 1, Episode 7, Spoiler Discussion. Now, this is not going to be a a play-by-play of everything. We're just going to talk about, you know, the the implications, the theories, the things that happened, the the theories that were proven right, the theories that were proven wrong. And uh, we only got two more episodes left, so we're going to just kind of see... Where everybody's at going into this thing. You know what I mean? Who is this aerospace engineer? Have we already met them? Have we not? I don't think we have. I think we still might. But I really don't know at this point. We were talking about before, like, they made... It wasn't the show who made a big deal about this aerospace engineer thing. They literally said two sentences about this dude. That's it. Like, I think I know an aerospace engineer who could do... who wants Who would want to do this episode later or two episodes later or something i think it was the next episode all right good to go meet my guy that's it we made a big deal out of that we were like it's gotta be reed richards it's gotta be hank mccoy it didn't have to be anything it probably was nothing like i wouldn't be i'm either leaning towards like we haven't met them yet in general like because the army crew of people who were up there that was not an aerospace engineer like, that was, like, Captain Goodner is not the, an aerospace engineer. Like, I don't buy that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if that was the guy, then we would have been told that that was the guy. You know what I mean? Right. Like, if it is a big deal. If it's not a big deal, then then that, we're just, there's no information. Just, just as that episode played out is how it would play out if it's not a big deal. So, I don't know. You guys on the camp that this? Do you think? Do you think this aerospace engineer thing actually is a, a like a person? Because I thought it'd be cool. The coolest thing I thought, like Reed Richards, John Krasinski would be cool and all, but like what I honestly thought would be the coolest thing would be the new MCU version of Hank McCoy. Like he comes out, he's like, "I'm Hank." It's not Kelsey Grammer. It's not Nicholas Holt. It's just. Who Kevin Feige has chosen to be, Hank McCoy, that's the aerospace engineer, because it's not Beast, he doesn't look like Beast, No. so we don't know if his mutant gene has been activated, or if he's using the serum that turns him back into human form, or what, we don't know, but it's just a guy named Hank McCoy, I thought that would have been the coolest way to do it, because you made a good point, John, with the Reed Richards thing, like, why are you going to introduce Reed Richards, like, in, in WandaVision? For just for this, for this thing, like oh sure, I'll build you a little little truck. <laughs> uh, you know, well, uh, well granted, I defended the truck because it it's a very a complicated Uber. truck. But it was a sweet Uber truck. Here. Do what? Monica, your Uber's here. It's uh some guy named Reed. He's brought you your Uber. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, but it's not. It it is a very sophisticated piece of machinery. All right, it needs to oh, breach an interdimensional wall that is literally changing matter as it goes in and out. Okay, it's not. This, it's not an Uber. It's, a, hmm. it's, it's like so, an Uber X, dude. Come on, <laughs> right, right? Uber <laughs> Black. Yeah, you're talking about introducing either a one of the most popular comic book character, single comic book characters in all of comic books, in Reed Richards, or b the first introduction of the most popular Marvel franchise into the MCU proper with Hank McCoy and the connection to the X-Men. And you're going to do it as a delivery service for a car to get into a WandaVision bubble? Like, no, no, that's way too small. That's what I think. Nothing. This means absolutely nothing. Like this is this is this is a big a much ado about nothing. The same way the beekeeper was much ado about nothing. It's just a way for the show to explain how instead of just saying, "Oh, I'm going to get in a special tank and drive it into there," she gives a little just a hint of a backstory so that people understand that it wasn't just that she magically do sex machine a. Uh, a, a, ma- a magic tank to get in there. She actually knows somebody who has some science background that was able to bring her a tank. Like that's the only reason that was mentioned at all. What do you say My about this exactly. though? What do you say about this? I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a wrench in your plan just briefly. <laughs> the actress you, go who ahead plays and try. the actress who plays Monica Rambeau did an interview where she was asked about the engineer, and she said, 
I can't wait for you guys to meet him or see who he is. Mm-hmm. I, I she mean, said that. Like, what okay, do you think about okay. that though? But but the mm-hmm. person the person that <laughs> brought her the that brought her the vehicle wasn't it the same person that was in the Captain Marvel movie? And yeah, so like maybe maybe for her she felt like well, yeah, but why she was going to meet her guy and he just doesn't show up and she hasn't mentioned at all that he didn't show up to bring it to her. Like maybe she was just like guy using the term he guy needed is kind to of a, design it. You need to design I, it. I, I, I really, didn't because really that leans to your point. Reed Richards or Hank McCoy were not the Uber. They designed the fucking truck. They didn't deliver it to him because they weren't there. But now that it didn't say, work. I my guy. I don't know. Somebody's going to have to I didn't come in. It's and... a show. I don't know. I don't know. But it would make sense <laughs> for them to come in now because they'd call him up and be like, dude, your thing didn't work. It didn't do anything. And then he comes it, in I'm and he's be, like, what the fuck you do in my car? It right. will be, <laughs> it'll be, it'll be the jump the shark moment for the MCU <laughs> if it turns out that this person is somebody of some importance. Like, I don't think seriously, that. I have to be harsh. Barry Reed Richards or Hank McCoy in a subplot to the WandaVision show. He just is... designed a car, though. It's not like it's, it's... Well, the car's already in the show, though. They don't... Why... Or, no, she's... Monica's Why already in Westview. You're at this point. <laughs> so you're going to put this it's genius true. person get the car in there to work. Like... Yeah, but Tony Stark has made a ton of things that didn't work. Look at Ultron. Like, come on. Not when it counted. Not... <laughs> Ultron! What do you mean when it chaos destroyed the world? <laughs> <laughs> it is not jump the sh- That's a bit. I don't agree with that. Like, if it was Hank McCoy, or if it's. It's not that bad. I don't think it's the best way for them to be introduced, but I also don't think it's anything that's going to take away from the character at all. Like, oh, they have these little oh. Easter eggs come up all the time, like, for, for it to be somebody. Marvel's like, really. They do that all what time. a great story. What a great moment in cinema to tell your tell your kids or somebody else about. Oh, you remember when they introduced Reed Richards? Yeah, he, he designed that car that didn't work. That was such a cool moment when he showed up. Well, they said it was okay. the best space rover. Like, had it worked. It was like it had already been around. Had the car worked. Would, you remember would that when that had been good? <laughs> and it was it, it was that car that didn't work. Yeah, oh boy, that was so cool. I, I, I agree. I agree. It's not the best way to do it, but I also I, I stand by the fact that it would not hurt anything if it was no. just if a it, little if wink. It, like if it's like Agent Colby Summers from the Avengers, like that might pique my interest. That might be inappropriate. Like maybe she has a background in astrophysics that we don't know about, and she's been working with Nick Fury underground, and like they tie that into Nick Fury getting back into the MCU. Like, oh yeah, I'm all on board for that. Like that would be cool. If it's Agent Fitz or Simmons from like the Agents of Shield show, and they kind of tie that back into it somehow. Like, oh yeah, definitely. Like that's a cool little like name drop there that that ties into the greater MCU as a whole, but also doesn't carry the weight and significance of introducing, like I said, the X-Men franchise into the MCU or the Fantastic Four into the MCU. Like those are that's such a weighty thing to to do. They it deserves a moment. Both those things deserve a moment. Um and this just isn't this this isn't it. So Yeah. I, I could see that your camera froze by the way. I could, I could see it going either way. I don't I don't totally agree that it's it, like the one character being introduced I don't think would be like earth shattering either negatively or positively. It's just a fun little thing. Like Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean like it's it's not going to be like I don't know. It, if it was Hank McCoy, I wouldn't look down on Hank McCoy now, like because he showed up and wanted to be like, why would you? Not? It's the number one rated show in the fucking world. It's not like it's like a small thing. Like you know, it's 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 a cool thing, and it has implications as it is going to affect Loki, Spider Man, and Doctor Strange. Like it's not a nothing thing. It is an event that is going to be stretched over three or four films. So no, no, I I well, agree two with shows that. In I, I, two films i'm with you on that i'm saying this particular plot point is such a small insignificant thing in this show that that like if had had one of them shown if one of them shows up with a device 
that takes down the barrier so that they can go in and help, you know, Wanda defeat Agatha. Because, I mean, you know, not to bury the lead here, but um, if, if one of them comes up with a device that takes down the entire barrier or, or nullifies the hex, then, yeah, that's a moment. That's a thing that 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 you know, leads that sets a dominoes in motion that, that is worthy of that. But to design a car that another character is going to use to cut, it's just, it's too small for me, man. Yeah. That's, Wait, that's, that's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. The office intro was like, that was, that was good. Yeah. I loved all the office. scenes that were like the interview scene. Like you specifically said, like the scenes with vision, one of you did like, those were great. I think oh, one yeah. of you guys did. I loved all those. I could watch, for one, Paul Bettany's great. Like he yeah. he just has like the best chemistry. With, like him and Darcy are good. Like he he's just good. No matter what he's doing, he's good. Like he's good. He's awesome. The first thing, like I don't know about you guys, but the first thing he really popped off for me was in a Knight's Tale. You guys remember that when I he do was a naked that. dude yeah. in a, a Knight's movie. Tale? He was the guy who did all the announcing for That's Heath Ledger. Like yeah, the Damn, Heath Ledger Knight movie. It's a good flick. It's a good movie. Like it's a, yeah. it's an underrated movie. It's good for sure. Like such a weird premise, but excellent movie. Yeah, the it, soundtrack. Yeah, it was like it. A, a modern soundtrack with that. That was like, yeah. yeah but it's really, it's really good. Like, yeah. It's like it's a cute yeah, little film. film. Cute little film. <laughs> it's a cute little film. <laughs> it's good. I like that movie a lot. But yeah, he is the guy who does all the announcing in that movie, and he killed that. Like it was good. It had a, Alan Tudyk was in that movie. Like, yeah. Great cast, great movie. But uh, I was going to pull up like clips and go through, but it just it doesn't. Uh, I wonder if they have like I think, software that I think, keeps you yeah, from screen capturing. I think they have something blocking, like you don't see the big picture. You, only, you oh, can see the small there? one, but. We can go by the subtitles. <laughs> we can go by the little thumbnail, I guess. But like, I I liked all this stuff. I don't feel like trying to see if it's there's, there's really not a whole lot we because that's the one thing. Nothing, not a whole lot happened in this one. There was a big reveal at the end, but it was kind of like a whimper. It was a whimper of a reveal to some degree, like because like, it was almost an expected reveal. Yeah, though. it's because everyone already like us. There were so many signs of her being Agatha. Yeah. I was just leaning towards it not being Agatha because they were throwing it in your face so many times. It like, was really? Agatha. Oh. You know, just like when the whole thing happens where Monica gets shot out and she says it's all Wanda. That made me think it's not Wanda. Like, sure. You know what I mean? It's like, this is like episode four. You're going to just tell me, like, what's going on? Because I already thought it was Wanda, and it is Wanda to some extent. We, we, we know that. That's but the now. Show's about. Yeah, now we know it's not just Wanda. So that was the whole thing. It's like, okay, well, maybe Agatha is involved. If you're going to tell me it's Wanda, then it probably means it's not Wanda. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I still think, by the looks of... We'll just talk about Agatha, really, because I don't really... There's not a whole lot more. Like, I just... I, I could watch anything with... If they were... To, if the whole damn show was based on, like, the docu-style, that would have been awesome. Yeah. I would have loved it. Like yeah. that would have been really like good. the entire show. The entire, entire show yeah. would have been like, or or at least more of it. I think it really suited itself for it. Like Vision, like trying to get this information out and like doing it. I thought it worked. Yeah, like Here, it really here's did. A, here's an interesting. Pr what if they would have flipped the flipped the order? What if they would have started with the docu series starting in like the 2010? So, so this episode being the first episode of the series where you get an entire episode in the docu style and then they went back in time. So you went from the this episode to the previous and so and, and then the further you got back in time they started weaving in more of the current day MCU stuff. Do you think that would have made it more entertaining so you would have had less of the old 50s and 60s episodes and more of the current docu styles? I think that would have worked for anybody who was turned off by the first. I was fine with it. It was strange. Like, I think it probably, if it was written that way and everything, I don't think it would have affected how the show flowed. Because, like, it made sense to go yeah. linearly. Like, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. It all made sense. But it, there would have been something to it by just having just the time periods the, change. Yeah, if you like, would have, I wonder what story justification you could give for scrolling time. I mean, obviously, we don't know how this series wraps up and how, what all the implications are of the sitcoms right. and everything. 
happening. So we'll have to see how that ends. I'm just wondering if they would have flipped the order on, on which they they did the they homaged the different sitcoms. Um, if that would have helped people stay more in, or gotten people invested earlier in the show. We're not getting a uh, season two of WandaVision. We're not supposed to be. No, it's supposed to be a one off thing. Okay, so it did let me. Let me see if this one comes through. Because the other thing that did pop off on this. Let's see here. Do you see this video? Yeah, yeah you can see this one now. Okay, let me get the right episode queued up then. Um, the Nexus of All Realities commercial. Well, the Nexus commercial. Yeah. Which has yeah. the obviously t the obvious tie-in of uh, if indeed it is the Nexus of All Realities. I don't know what else it would be. But I mean, that has... That brings about some implications. I mean, it definitely could lead into why you have um, Jamie Foxx's Electro showing up and like why all these things are happening on Cuckoo Land with uh, the rest of the other movies this thing is supposed to flow into. Mm -hmm. We have that. Like, is that. Really, there's so much that could go into the Nexus of All Realities thing. It's kind of hard to say where they would go with it. You know what I mean? There's your engineer. Nah, that's, that's <laughs> Goodner. It ain't no engineer. That ain't who the engineer is. Let me see something real quick. Uh, do do do. It's on another tab. Hold on. Or another. So here's. I I think this Agatha Harkness reveal. I don't. I honestly, I, it's it's a little odd to me that they made such a, like. It was Agatha all along when so many people knew it. Now, I guess for a, a person that's not, doesn't know the comics and doesn't follow the comics, it, it, it might have been kind of surprising. Um, but I kind of, I, I think the bigger surprises or reveals are yet to come. And I, I hope that's the case. Because if this was the big twist, if this was the big, aha, that's what's going on, then... I hate to say it, but I'm going to be a slightly let down by it. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I was expecting something a little more re revelatory. Is that even a word? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. It's a bit anticlimactic yeah. if it's just a witch. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Especially doing it this late in the game. You know what I mean? There's only two episodes left. So if we're going to look at no, no previous history between them. No, yeah. like we don't know what her motivations are at this point and stuff. If it's just a personal vendetta, like it's going to be interesting. That's, that's the one thing that they've always done well with the villains in the MCU is they've given them a, a story or a, or a justification that, that makes it not just a simple, Oh, they're just bad. Like yeah. even Loki in the first Thor, like he wasn't just it wasn't just because he's the god of mischief that he was like he had this tragic story of being this kid who was given to this other family and like growing up feeling like he was second and inferior to his brother Thor. Like they've mm -hmm. from the jump, they've always done so good with the villains. I mean, the only one that really I mean, maybe Iron Man, Obasai, Obadiah Stane, he he may have been a little cookie cutter. But other than that, they've always done a real good job giving some some weight to their villains. And so for her to show up this late in the game and not have that would be a little disappointing. I so I based on her basement layout, I gotta think like because my initial thought before the before the Agatha reveal was that it was nightmare. Because like once we had the the Yo Magic commercial, Mephisto and Nightmare were far more on the table for me. Because I, I never really considered them being a part of it. I just I just thought Wanda was fucking shit up for the most part. Yeah. Like that's in right. which does seem to be the case. But once the Yo Magic commercial comes in and literally says, like, when I'm hungry, I feed on Yo Magic or I eat Yo Magic. It makes me think that okay, well, somebody is feeding off, off of Wanda's of magic. Yeah. Right? And based on her basement layout, it does look like it looks like it could be far more closer inclined to uh, intertwined with Mephisto rather than Nightmare, because I was initially leaning towards maybe Nightmare because of the Doctor Strange connections and this going into Doctor Strange 2. Granted, Mephisto has Doctor Strange connections too, but like Nightmare was already kind of rumored to be the, the, the big bad for Doctor Strange 2 
kind of prior to all this stuff happening. So I don't know if they're sticking with that or not, but that's what Derrickson was going to do when he was still attached. So, like, Nightmare made sense to me, but her basement layout definitely looks more like a demon playground. It really Mephisto does. Mephisto being a demon kind of makes sense. I mean, what if, like, could they be together? I yeah. imagine she would work for Mephisto yeah. or work with Mephisto. That's what I was saying. Because yeah. she had that book, which we don't know what that book is, but they made a point to show us the book. Like, could it be a book that was taken from one of the Sanctum Sanctorums? Could it be... Uh, like a lot of people thought it maybe was a dark hold from Agents of Shield, but it's a completely different looking book. So that's if what it I is, read about. Yeah, if it's the dark hold, then Agents of Shield does not exist because Kevin Feige already kind of considers that to not exist anyway because he had nothing to do with it. But if this is his version of a dark hold, then all that stuff's completely separate. If if that's what they're gonna say, if this is a dark hold, so I don't know. But the book has to do something. It was glowing with energy. And then I brought up to you guys, like, the uh, the the hex. Before Wanda came out of the hex, it was, like, that bluish-purple color, mm -hmm. right? And then when Wanda went back in the hex, after throwing the guns up on everybody, she hit it and it turned red. Wanda's it, powers are red. Well, it stayed red. but And it stayed red. But Agatha's powers, as we saw... They are like they're a bluish purple color. It's not working. Oh, it's gone again. How? Yeah. Weird. Oh wait, is this Hold wrong on. tab? Yeah, it's the wrong tab. Hold on. It's in a different browser. Here. <laughs> Let me just. Pull it up makes my... me think that they really do have software that's like keeping you from screen. Well, capping. it's weird because remember when I tried to pull it up before and it was just all black. That was in yeah. Firefox. And so I pulled it up in Chrome and it actually loaded the website, but then Chrome isn't playing the video on stream but firefox was actually now it's loading the video and plays it on stream so it's kind of like a win-win but either way her powers are uh agatha's powers are shown to be like a bluish purple color so it, it, it there's another conflicting thing with that though because that kind of you my initial theory was okay well maybe she was behind the like the construction of the hex and she was the one holding it together because it was like hers as a, you know it, it kind of matches her colors you know more so than it like when wanda goes back in it's red but it was blue before but once this agatha all the time thing happens catch a song by the way yeah but it looks like it was blown up twitter today <laughs> yeah demon, yeah when she pops in, it looks like, at least the way this scene is established and the little, like, jingle comes on, it looks like she inserts herself into WandaVision. You know what I mean? Like, she comes into frame. So. It definitely looks purple, though. Not it blue. does. Yeah. But well, that's the thing. It does. It looks like it was already here and she came into it. Yeah. Not that she created it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a conflicting thing. Like, the barrier used to be a more similar color to her magic. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it looks like she came into it. So it's kind yeah. of hard to say. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, why was it blue before, though? It doesn't make any that sense for it to be blue. Sense. Like, even if her powers are purple, that's fine. Wanda's are red. So, like, it doesn't make any sense for it to be blue at all. It made more sense for it to be red. Like, and they were making a point when they showed, like, the drones getting shot out of it and they were wheeling the drone in into the sword headquarters, like the base that they had set up. It's glowing red. Everything in there is affected by red magic that was coming out because Wanda's magic is red. So why was the hex originally blue? No one's asking that question, but I am. God damn it. Something <laughs> don't make it. Don't make no sense. Yeah. Don't make no sense. But the, but the hex, the barrier could have been put up by somebody else as a way to keep Wanda in. But then Wanda could have constructed everything inside in, inside of the hex. Well, yeah, but like who would be? But she could Maybe. go in and out. She wasn't being kept in. She walked right out of that barrier. I really don't get why it's switched. You know what I mean? Like she, she was able to go out. She knew the barrier was there. She expanded the barrier when Vision was out. It's like she it doesn't seem like she was being held in there by anybody. She wants to be in there. I yeah, think. like she definitely wants That's to be. That's her in reality. There. Yeah. And that's why I still I still think that this may have all started. Now I think I came up with this because I haven't heard anybody say this online. So 
I think this may have all started because she used her powers on herself, and that's how her powers evolved. Because you know how she could made she made all the Avengers hallucinate that shit in Age of Ultron. That was her power, right? She made them they made them see things. I think maybe she was doing that on herself to, to like see to see things other than reality. Because like in her reality, she had nothing. Vision was dead. Pietro's dead. Every she lost everything. Whatever. So she's using her powers on herself. But while she's in that dreamlike state, her powers were manifesting, and the shit became reality. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's what I think happened. So, heard that here first. And I've said <laughs> it before in the past on a different freaking episode of this too. So, it's it's a thing. But I haven't heard anybody else thinking that. And like that's what has always made the most logical sense to me is like she's grieving and that's the thing about it. If you could literally make your like make people see things essentially. Wouldn't you do that to yourself if you didn't want to be awake anymore? Like you right. don't want to be living right now. You want to like, create your like dream reality of what yeah. you want to be happening. Right. right. And she can literally do that. So why would she not do that? I wish I could do that. That's what I'm saying. Dude. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would like to do that for sure. But yeah, this cave setup definitely here's the book. So like, it looks completely different than like, and see, and it's glowing in red, which is another weird thing. Like, so, like, that's another thing, too. It's like, well, maybe, I don't really know. I don't know. I don't know what we can think about the colors of things, but, like, I feel like they have to mean something. Yeah. Well, maybe the book is absorbing her magic. Wanda's magic. Like maybe feeding off the Yeah, magic, maybe yeah. the book is doing it. Like, I don't know. It's interesting. Do you guys think, uh, you think Mephisto's, like, a part of this at this point? I don't really know. I don't know much about Mephisto, but well, they, John... got, they got all these things like these little like demon heads. Like there's a couple of them throughout here. Yeah, in here, Mephisto is essentially just a demon. Like he's referred to as Satan a lot of the times like in the name. comics. But he's, he's just he's Mephisto. just like a demon dude. Like imagine someone who lives in hell. Like, yeah, it's like a it's a realm that is like hell. That's Mephisto. Yeah, he's just like a demon. Dude. This is Mephisto. Yeah, this is <laughs> Kit Fisto <laughs> and Mephisto. But yeah, I think the cave looks more like a Mephisto thing, more so than a nightmare thing. I don't know, though. I, I wouldn't see, be a good... I could see it being a nightmare thing, but I just don't think Agatha's doing this alone for fun. I feel like she has a greater purpose. Like, and I feel like maybe it's the classic... Mephisto's locked in like another realm. They're feeding off the energy to bring Mephisto out of like, you know, his realm and the books doing that. They're using Wanda as a vessel to bring in the energy and then boom, the doors open and it's hell on earth now and Mephisto wins. It would make more sense for it to be nightmare to tie into Doctor Strange in my opinion though. That's just me. Because nightmare... Night, if, nightmare is, if Nightmare is the primary villain in the new Doctor Strange movie, do you really want him... Again, do you want to lose... Do you want WandaVision to steal the thunder of that, of that villain? No, because it would de it depend on... Because she's in Doctor Strange as well, so the story is going mm -hmm. to continue. So if it's... Because it's just this big... I'm looking at it like it's this big arc that's being set up, right? So if in Doctor Strange 2, when it comes out... Like, he has to save Wanda or stop Wanda, right? Like, one of yeah. the two. Mm -hmm. Like, Wanda's going to be the bad guy, or Mephisto or Nightmare's going to, like, take her and, like, be using her. Like, because like, right now, she's able to roam free and, like, do this, and they're feeding off her and fine and dandy. But obviously, things aren't working out as well as they were before, and that's why Agatha revealed herself, my guess. Like, so... Maybe at this point they want her to keep doing what she's doing so they can feed off her and like I don't I don't know I don't know but nightmare makes more sense to me as far as a multiverse of madness goes because I feel like you can play a little bit more with the nightmare realm being able to exist in multiple realities as one realm you know what I mean kind of like the realm between and realms works with the whole uh, nexus of all realities like the nightmare realm could very well be a realm that is linear throughout the multiverse. Because it's a nightmare, like you know what I mean. So, like, I just feel like it would make more sense for them to like kind of do an adaptation with that, because then like it would make sense for Nightmare to be able to traverse to these different 
multiverses and see the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and see all these things because they're just they exist in the nightmare realm. You know what I mean? Yeah. As opposed to like Mephisto, it's more of like a hellish kind of realm. I don't know the full details of it, but it seems more like it'd be localized to that one place. Yeah, I feel like, like I feel like we're I feel like that's such a I, I feel like the villains being I, introducing the multiverse in that way, like just seems convoluted. I don't know. To to me, at least, like it very well could be. Why are you like establish? Like they did a good job. They did such a good job in Spider-Man: Far From Home of introducing the concept of there are different realities. There are just different realities out there. Like to say that you have to. That you have to enter the nightmare realm to get from one to the other, or well, that no, not that you have nightmares, to get to it. It night, or that even 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 just the, even that nightmares realm exists is is a tether that ties them all together, and he bounces back and forth between them because his it's just I I feel no, like no, that no. that's more your that's your your description was far more convoluted and confusing. It's just the nightmare realm is one realm in the multiverse, and it's all connected to it. Not like it's all bound to it. It's just the nightmare realm itself is one realm. You know what I mean? Because there's multiple multiverses. Like the, there's a bunch of multiverses, but there's one nightmare realm. So like he has the ability, and all the beings within the nightmare realm could go and traverse all forms of multiverse shit. You know what I mean? Because the nightmare realm is tied to all of them, as opposed to like you have Earth six one six and Earth nine two eight four, and like that's fucking convoluted. Like, that's hard to remember. This is just one thing that exists between them all. It's it Really, it simplifies things if they were to go that route. You know what I mean? So if you have 97,000 different Earths, there's still one sure. Nightmare Realm. That's it. You know what I mean? So like yeah. that would be like a way for Nightmare to be able to introduce weird elements. But that's like the Fox's only Quicksilver. thing that ties the, like, is, is there one... Is there another, is there a, for lack of a better way to put it, is there a heaven realm that ties them all together that's the opposite of the nightmare realm? Like, oh, it doesn't I, tie anything together, though. It's just, it's just exists in that. Well, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm saying tie together, but I mean, like, you're, you're saying that the nightmare, the nightmare realm of Earth 616 is the same as the nightmare realm of Earth 978. Um, the same, you know, are there other realms that care, have that same property that is there a heaven realm for 616 and a heaven realm? I would probably say no, in all honesty. Nine, uh, if I were to eight, be making this up, I would say no. Like, I would make the nightmare realm to be like a, a, a unique, a unique that. like yeah, that's what makes kinda. it unique. That's just the only thing that I, this is all shit coming out of my brain and I'm not a writer. So this is just with the way with what, with what I'm being given in this show. It's just what's coming to my mind. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah. I'm trying to connect everything, too. I'm trying to look beyond just because... Because uh, the, the main thing is with this is there's only two episodes left. So, like, kind of like you were saying, if this is it, like, it's just Agatha, it's going to be kind of disappointing. But at the same time, what more can they do? There's only, like, well, an hour left of the show. Like, right. you, like yeah. uh, Even trying to just expound upon what Agatha wanted to do that's like a whole episode, like just trying to figure, like just telling us what she was doing. Let alone, okay, there's nightmare, there's Nefisto, like, oh yeah, and Pietro's this, like you know, what I mean, there's a lot they got to do in this very short period of time. Not to get off topic, but I just I wanted to before I forget. Do you guys think that they're gonna have like a flashback episode so we see how this all started? I would hope so. I want some sort of explanation. Because theoretically, that would be this next one. Because the, the finale would have to be the finale. Like, they wouldn't do the flashback thing then. Well, I mean, even but, if it's just a scene that's a flashback, like a quick flashback just showing, like, this is how it started. Yeah, like, they, this they is have what to explain it at some point. Yeah. I think they probably will show something that explains how it all started. Even if it's just given to us in the form of Agatha giving exposition and then the scene plays. Yeah. You know, like something like that. I, I think that there's going to be like, at least like a good five to 10 minutes of explaino as to, okay, this is what, how it all happened. And now we're here. Like, yeah. you know, I could totally that's see what that I'm happening. saying. Like something quick. You know? See, that's I'm, 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 a, I'm 
you know, part of me is afraid that that's what the whole Agatha song was about. Like, or the Agnes song was about that. That was their, this is, this is what's been going on the whole time. And it really didn't make a lot of sense. Like, oh, it didn't make why sense. did she, why did she wake her, her up? Like when they were standing at the wall, why, why did she have him talking to vision, but yet not actually tell vision anything? Um, why did she have him, you know, uh what is it trimming the 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 concrete wall like the little things that happened in here i i understand that this was showcasing her using her powers and influencing stuff but, but why? the the why of it is completely absent and missing and, and it's also too it's, it's given in the context of scenes where it's not not just in the grand scheme of things why it's like literally why are you doing this thing right here like exactly. what purpose did this serve? It's like when uh, when it goes to the scene where she is the director for like this the where does it go? Oh, when they're doing like the confessional yeah. thing. And- yeah, when they're doing this. We heard the like the boom guy or somebody talk, and it wasn't Agatha's voice because he said like, "Yeah, don't She's you like, think you, you, you deserve it?" You know, whatever. Like that yeah. wasn't Agatha; that was some random guy. So it's like this wasn't even a thing. But what like, if there's you know? some sort of hex, though, that made it seem like it was some random guy from Wanda's standpoint, but in all reality, it was Agatha all along. I don't know. Maybe if that's what they're making it seem like, if Agatha is literally creating everything and like has like maybe maybe how I said that maybe this all happened because Wanda used her power on her. Maybe Agatha just did it to her. Is, yeah. <laughs> like, do you think because they didn't have that, that shot? Where she he she puts her in the trance, which is the same kind of trance that she put the Avengers in. It's just with her color instead of red. What were you saying? Yeah, I was gonna say. Do you think that this is? I didn't even. This never even occurred to me until you said you brought up the part where she said, "Do you don't you think you deserve it?" Do you think Agatha is somehow related to the incident in? Uh, Civil War, where Sokovia, um, Sokovia, or, yeah. Civil War um, and uh, Lagos. Was it Lagos? Yeah, where where mm-hmm. Scarlet Witch lost her you know, hold on the on the bomb, and yeah. she ended up ended up resolving. Like, do you think Agatha is Lagos related, is in South Africa and, though? So I don't know if she would have any ties to that. Not that she couldn't. Say, it's just Lagos is in South Africa, so I just don't know yeah. if she would have any because she's if it's Agatha Harkness, she's supposed to date back to the Salem witch witch trial. Yeah, she's a surviving witch. But I'm yeah. just sure. I'm just weird. trying to figure out like like she could still date back, but maybe her daughter or her great granddaughter or whatever yeah, lived in there at the time. I'm just trying to trying to rationalize figure out what from Wanda's past that 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 they how make her, her that did, don't you think you deserve it has to you know, there has to be some justification for. That. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they could honestly like, because that's the thing with the, with the Agatha Harkness character. She's never been like a major, major play. She's been a part of some like major storylines, but like there were times where she was been like a friend to Wanda. She's like a babysitter at times. Like literally, like she's not like this big like Thanos level thing that we know who Thanos is. Like they could really adapt her in any way. They could say that yeah. she's her birth mom. You know, for all we know. Like, True. and then the the other thing is like she has a son in the comics at, at in some iterations. So people are thinking too, like, okay, well, is maybe uh, Evan Peters just her son, who like is supposedly a villain? Like, I don't know. And that's the thing too with Quicksilver. Quicksilver in quotes, Pietro here, Evan Peters, is he just some random guy that was already in the hex? Just like a regular human being that uh, Agatha just used a spell on to make him go and act like Pietro, and that's why he looks like that. That's what that would be logical, like, I think. Or even because I took it a step further on stream, even and suggested that maybe like she has the ability as a witch to maybe commune with the dead and actually inserted like the spirit of Aaron Taylor Johnson mm. into that Pietro and that's why he was like yeah I know I look different like whatever like yeah it's just, and he still has his powers He's and all that stuff I don't that, know. yeah like who this the is gonna knows? be this is and again I, I think I said this maybe on stream or maybe in a past episode but it's gonna be such a I, it's it's such a weird 
casting decision to pull the same actor that played the same or not, pull the same actor, yeah, that played the same character in a different franchise and cast them as a version of that character in your fr- like it, this is like they could have accomplished all of what you're saying if if he truly is just a person that they implanted the memories of Pietro in and whatever like they could have accomplished that with any actor on the planet like to oh, out yeah. of all the actors and all the people to go get the one from the Fox franchise that they just got the rights to that they know everybody is waiting on to come but that's in that's why you do it it's sure, sure. I I, under, I, I understand the I, I understand the idea behind it. I'm just saying, like, it feels, it feels like you're playing with fire at that point, and it feels like you're 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 intentionally jerking the audience around by doing that. Like, I totally, I know what you mean. Like, for sure. The only thing, like, the only caveat I feel is with it is like most people out there didn't even know Evan Peters played Quicksilver. Yeah. Because no one watched those movies. I didn't. <laughs> if it was Hugh Jackman coming in as like a random character in WandaVision, people would be pretty pissed off. Like, you know, like if you're going to bring Hugh Jackman in and he's not Logan kind of thing, but like he's like there to be Logan. And, like people would be mad about that, I think. Or like Charles Xavier, you know, like they, they wheel one of them in and it's like, oh no, it's not really him. People would be upset about that. Now, but I get it. If, I'm upset about it. Now, I think what would be <clears throat> cool, and they don't have to introduce the MCU version of mutants into this, and they could get away with explaining it, would be if Agatha, or if there's somebody else that's working with Agatha, if they tapped into the Nexus and reached out for a Pietro the, the an idea of Pietro, and that's the one they came across. Even though it's, it has no connection to the MCU universe, even if it has no whatever you know bearing on this particular story, but that's the version of it that they created to torment Wanda with. Um, that that might be kind of cool. Like, but but I still think at this point, like. I understand what you're saying. Like people, most common person doesn't know that. And that's, that's great. Like I had to explain to Tracy who, who that person was, but, um, I, I get that point of it, but you also have to realize like your core audience, the people who got you to where you are, are the comic book people. Like the people that that's, that's the people who started going to these movies. That's the people who made Iron Man one, the success it was. And, I just think jerking them around by trying something like that and have it have no bearing on the on the show is that's a it's a tricky part, thing to pull off. I, I agree. I like I would honestly go towards the camp of like I, I I think I said like if it's not the Fox Pietro, like it's kind of a dirty thing. Like it's kind of a yeah. it's like an underhanded like way to like troll people. That's mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Hopefully it's yeah. not just that though. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure it is. I, I'm 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 leaning ever more towards it having zero to do with Evan Peters at all. Like I'm literally at this point would almost lean more towards like it was, he was just a random guy there that she put a spell on. Right. Like, and it's like, it It has nothing to do with Pietro. Yeah. And it was just an Easter egg that they got Evan Peters to come in and do it. Like that's like, I'm leaning more towards that at this point than I am any correlation to him being a quicksilver in any aspect like other than the spell agatha has on him i don't it, it could be anything though like the nexus is there it could be her son and they're just messing with her and like and that's why he looks like that like just because that's just what her son it's just a like. nod easter egg to the other franchise. yeah like that's kind of what i'm leaning towards now is that he was literally there for an easter egg like I don't know though. It's who's to say? Charles Xavier could come wheeling in the last frame and just like fix everything for everybody. Like you never know. Like I mean, he he can set up barriers in people's minds. He could help Wanda. You know, he could help put up the barriers in her mind to make her stop. That'd doing be the crazy Luke shit. Skywalker like reveal. Yeah, because yeah. I mean that's the thing. That's still supposedly out there. You know what I mean? Like it's still a th- there's still supposed to be someone out there that. Paul Bettany has always wanted to work with to come in and make a, a cameo appearance. And like people, Patrick people, Stewart. Are, people are thinking Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, uh, 
Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Like I thought, because uh, Al Pacino, obviously, people think we're are leaning more towards Mephisto. I'm I'm assuming given his correlation to the Devil's Advocate, because mm. he played the Devil. Um, I still thought it would have been cool and would have made sense for what Paul Bettany said is if they did the engineer thing as Blue Marvel, and it was like uh, Denzel Washington. Pretty sure anybody wants to work with Denzel. So if he were to come in and cameo and be the Blue Marvel. Just to be, because that's the thing, if it's only Blue Marble, it kind of fits what you want the engineer to be, which is nobody, because not many people know who Blue Marble is, and they would never have to do anything else with the Blue Marble character, because they could just say, like, yeah, but he's Denzel Washington, you know? Right. Like, mm-hmm. like if we ever wanted him, we got Denzel, like, to come in and play Blue Marble. Like, like it's a character who's super powerful, who they would never really need they have to use with one of the best actors in the world. So I'm yeah. thinking it could be that still, if they do the engineer thing, Denzel Blue Marvel, that would fit Paul Bettany's actor book. But I don't know. I, I, just, I have no idea. Yeah. I, the I next two if, episodes will be interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where they're going with it. That's kind of the beauty of the show though. In a lot of ways is they answer questions and then they leave you with more questions. Right. And, like, I, I'm totally with uh, you, John, though, that this one... I think, Rick, you kind of felt the same way, too, though. It was kind of like... It was almost like a whimper of sorts. Like, I, I loved the episode. Yeah, it was a good episode. It was just like... Oh, it ended okay. really abruptly, though. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, that's the thing, dude. Every left you with one, a lot of these questions. These episodes are too short. I they hate, really are. I hate it. Did you know, so this one was the longest <laughs> one so far, right? It I think seemed it was like 38 short minutes or something. 38 minutes, yeah. Yeah, 38, 38 but, I mean, minutes. they have they have quite a few credits i mean I yeah say, exactly really like, like the credits minutes. start at oh well, hold on because technically speaking the initial credits start here when you go into vision's eye that was at 30 minutes exactly then you have your post credit scene with snooper's gonna snoop two minutes snooper's later gonna snoop mm-hmm. so yeah it's like it was like 31 minutes long if you want to include like well, I'll, I'll round up for them 31 minutes i don't know I just think these episodes are too short. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I, and I don't, I guess I've said it before. It doesn't need to be an hour, 45 minutes, 40 minutes. It's like right when we get into this, like reveal. Yeah. But do, come do back you, next week. Do you really okay. want stuff and filler in here? Like, I mean, if this is the story that they have, no, to tell, I just want like, it to I be don't six just... episodes instead of nine. Like, I, like, you know what I mean? Like it's just tell the stories. They just end so abruptly. Like, and I know if they wrote it to do this, then fine. It wouldn't make sense just to, like, tack on the next 15 minutes. But yeah. I, I would prefer a 40-minute episode, a 45-minute episode, something along those lines. Because it's like, when you exp- when you sit down to watch, like, a premium show, it's always been the hour-long format. And then your sitcoms, which worked for the sitcom parts of this, those were 22 minutes long without commercials. Yeah. Your dramas and stuff were always 40 to 45 minutes without commercials. This is how it's always been. And then you had Game and of this Thrones. this is right that in the middle like of 50. There. Well, this is only 31 minutes. So it's right in the middle. I mean, you got 40, <clears throat> 44. Oh, yeah, it's kind one, of in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other, so this is dead smack in the middle of those. Yeah. I, I don't know. I personally don't notice the length at all. Like, I... I get they they hook me in. I'm invested in the story within the first couple minutes of the show, and then yeah. when it ends, it ends. Like I, I don't notice the fact that I have been watching it for a while, or I have not been watching it for a while. Like the the breaks work in terms of they put them for me. They 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 obviously this one the the reveal that it was Agatha all along happens, and then you break. It's the classic kind of cliffhangerish. Um, ending to to a story. No, yeah, it definitely. I tell you what, they they've done a really good job with pacing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, you you got a good freeze here. Right, it's a Bam. Good one. <laughs> we got it for everybody right there. You, you're puckering up. That was good. <laughs> um, they do a great job with pacing, though. Even though it's a 31 minute thing, and you get a shit ton of information thrown at you. It all feels, it flows really well. It, every episode is fun. And Mandalorian was the same way. And I felt the same way. I feel like they're too short. Like, it needs to, just, like, just 10 more minutes. Just let it roll yeah. out for 10 more. Like, 
every time i just i want more of it to begin with like so you know what i mean like uh, what it's days not, or weeks of filming is that though for 10 minutes yeah not days and weeks at all it's it's 10 minutes of time yeah but i mean all that goes into that and it like, depends on the scene if it's a continuation of like the scene that it ends on it's just oh, 10 no. more minutes yeah. you know what i mean it just depends on the setup really like if, how many camera angles you got to change? How many cr- more crew people you got to bring in? Ten minutes over time, over time, over time in different areas. Yeah, that could be days worth of work. But especially on the Mandalorian, it's like you just boot up the volume and you just go do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> like, right. It must be great working there. Like that'd be awesome. But what you guys got? Anything else? And I think I covered everything that I had with this episode. I don't I, know where they're going with it. Like, <clears throat> the I just thought the the final like the after credit scene was. I, I'm not. I, I'm I'm interested to see. I, I thought ending on the Agnes, it was a- Agatha all along. It was odd that this was where they chose to throw an, a, a mid credit scene, and it was odd that this was the mid credit scene that they chose to show. Like, it seemed kind of. I mean, if the Agatha thing was, if the Agatha reveal was anticlimactic, the post credit scene was even more anticlimactic. Oh yeah, like, I was ex- when you said that. Is that just to remind everybody that Pietro still exists in this world? Like, I, I just was like, I was expecting more out of that scene. Yeah, I, I definitely, for me, this was overall the weakest episode of the series so far, um, and I'm a little concerned that the series is going to end with a whimper rather than a bang because I loved it so much. And like, I'm hoping that the next episode ratchet ratchets up the stakes and the, the reveals and the, the story a little bit. Yeah. Cause with that, I, I totally agree in the sense that we have that one clip of like Wanda and vision and it could have been cut in a different way, but it's vision says like, well then let's fight for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is our world. It, it seems like they could very well, especially with the Agatha all along thing, be setting up your just classic, the good guys win, and that's it. Right. And I was really yeah. hoping for the show was setting up, like, at least had the potential to set up some, like, really original stuff with, like, you watch the, like, the freaking origin of a supervillain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Wanda in the end just loses her shit. And you yeah, know, exactly. like that kind of thing. And that's what leads into the rest. That's kind of like what the show was kind of laid out to be. And like and now then, it seems then, like maybe not. And then you set the you set the the stage or you set the the, the world for or the story beats for Wanda's a redemption arc for Wanda later on mm-hmm. down the road in the MCU somewhere, you know? Yeah. Maybe you have her be that, you know, that you have her be the Darth Vader, you know, of of the MCU, the the good guy that went bad, that that is bad for a little bit, and then has to be redeemed somehow. Like, if it ends up just being Agatha, it'll be a fun, cool story. I'll still probably like it, but again, because it's played out over nine episodes, because I've had a week in between each each episode to kind of come up with my own thoughts on what what's going on, what I'd like to see happen because I've heard other people say, well, like what ideas they have of what's going on. You've, you've really given plenty of time for people to build up their own ideas and stories that you may not be able to match at the end. Mm -hmm. Which is really like kind of the blessing and the curse of doing the week by week thing. Right. Because then it, it leaves, it leaves everybody out there. It gives the show enough time to breathe and build up a huge audience and stuff, but then it leaves your audience with, kind of a lot of their own time to formulate and get attached to their own theories. You know what I mean? And then which will just inevitably, because everyone's human, it'll lead to disappointment, you know, for a lot of people like, and not that it's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Like, it's not like a, it's not like Matt Shackman's fault or Jackie can't remember her last name. Jack, uh, I can't remember the last the showrunner of the show. Her name's Jack something. I forget what it is. And then Matt Shackman's been been the director of every episode. But it's not like their fault that everyone else like it's like the fucking uh, the aerospace engineer thing. It ain't their fault that everyone else made a big deal about it. You know? Yeah. It's like that's on us for being like, no, this has got to be something. Like this is something. Yeah. Like no, they just they they did their thing and like even with this like. 
if this is a story they were wanting to tell, like, this is it. It's really on us if we're like, well, that didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. Like, I don't know. I'm so, I'm with you, and I'm going to try to just, I'll like it for what it is, as long as I like it in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I kind of agree, this one was like, I don't really necessarily know if it would, I would maybe say it was the weakest, but it was the only one that made me just, just go, huh. Mm, Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, like all the other ones I, I left, I was left with intrigue. I didn't, I didn't leave with intrigue for this one. I was just like, eh, okay. Um, like, you yeah. know what I mean? So I don't know. That's how it was for me. Yeah. So we'll see. But I liked it. I, I hope that, I hope they stick the landing. This kind of show, it could always go the way of lost and like, does not hit that landing. You know, they'll put that bad mojo Jojo on it. That's what I'm saying. But it's hmm. the same kind of show though. It's got that overarching mystery to it. And then when you get to the reveal, you're like, huh, okay, I just wasted huh. six years of my life, like, or whatever, however many seasons I had. So, you guys got anything else? I think that covers it for me. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good.